is most of the 25 officers. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Joining me on the whiteboard is Chaz Dye. Chaz is the database solutions architect at Pure Storage. Chaz, thanks for joining us. George, nice to see you again. So, Chaz, as I talk to uh, customers, they're trying to figure out how to uh, best leverage Flash. One of the biggest uh, scenarios is mid-market databases. Sure. But they see these huge performance numbers, and they just don't think it applies to them. And frankly, probably a million IOPS doesn't apply to most of them. For that mid-market database uh, administrator and the mid-market storage administrator, what's the real gain for all Flash for these guys? Well, you're right that really nobody needs a million IOPS. But what's been going on over time? as everybody knows, is Moore's Law. So CPUs and memory have been riding this curve. Disk has been riding a flat line. And what Flash brings to the picture is the ability for the database or whatever you're using storage for to get on this bus and go that way. So basically, performance becomes less, or it may be a non-issue or even less of an issue in, in those environments. Yeah, it's very common for a database to be I.O. bound these days, simply because disk hasn't kept up with the performance of the other components. With Flash, that I.O. that I.O. limitation goes away. And so one so as a result, if they're, they're trying to make this work in a disk based system, they, they end up doing all kinds of you know unnatural acts, if you will, to get it to work. Does, what does Flash do to, to level that? So what happens is that if you're on this bus, you're doing things like trying to decide what RAID level you want for the high performance piece, such as redo logs or transaction logs, and you're putting perhaps data files on RAID 5, and you're making a bunch of decisions and making a bunch of compromises in order to optimize this flat, the, this, this disk limitation. Well, and all that takes time, right, which especially in the mid-market the guy doesn't have, right? And, and it also uh, probably lays a lot of opening for error and, and maybe a mistake that causes either database to go down or something else, right? It's a lot of compromise and nobody's ever completely happy. Everybody would love to be on the fastest, fastest performing I.O. bus they can be on, but you cannot because of cost, because of performance limitations and so forth. So Flash opens the door to simplicity, where there are, there are no RAID decisions. It leads to simplicity in the sense that provisioning Flash is as simple as giving a volume a name, for example, and giving it a size and presenting it to the host. And, and I don't have to think about where to put my redo logs and my main database files and things like that, right? It just all goes on Flash. Put it all on Flash. So I think there's, so I guess then the concern is, um, how, can I afford it, right? Can sure. I afford Flash, and is it safe? What, what do you say to those sort of concerns? Well, Flash does have peculiarities, and so you can't simply put a bunch of SSDs into an enclosure and expect to have a nice day, because you won't. So in order to benefit from Flash, you need to give it, you need to write to it in the way that it needs to be written to, and you need to read from it in the way that optimizes its performance. And so. If you want to use Flash as your storage solution, you really need a software layer to give you reliance, give you predictability, and give you the performance that you need. Okay, and, and I think that's where you guys have really come in at Pure, right? Is that you focus on that software aspect, correct? We are a software company even though we sell hardware. We sell commodity hardware. Our, our value add is the software that understands Flash. We spent a year researching the peculiarities of Flash. We spent two years in beta getting feedback from customers, and we've been GA for over a year now, and we actually understand what the uh, strengths and weaknesses are, and we have consistent performance, predictable performance. We don't do perhaps a million IOPS, but we have yet to see a database that can push anywhere near that kind of traffic. Okay, and, and so I know that like when we were talking earlier, you had mentioned that you had done some specific things around, say, write amplification, which can be a problem in a database environment. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? So write amplification is the issue that when you update a flash cell, Perhaps you want to update just this little bit here. The problem is that in order to do an, to do an update, you need to actually read the entire block, make the, the update to that little block, but also write all the other stuff that was already there, which means that even though you're only writing that much, or you need to write that much from the host perspective, you end up writing this entire block. So what we do is that we never write to a block that has data in it already. We always write to, flesh, to fresh virgin flash, if you will, which means we're immune from write amplification. And, and what's the impact to the database administrator if, if that's either you know, not managed well? So the, what will happen if it's not managed well is that performance will at some point unravel when you start writing or updating Flash that already has data on it. The good example is probably an Oracle database where you're writing redo logs, which are circular log files, uh, at least logically speaking. So instead of going back to the original log file and rewriting to that log file, we actually are writing to virgin space all the time, which means, for example, we can write redo at the rate of about six gigs a minute, which is really more than 
anybody's going to need. And then that's a really good example of that sort of that predictability that we were talking about that you're not going to run into a, a surprise at some point that gets you fired. Or correct, something. Yeah. correct. We, we can, uh, once we uh, establish the workload, that workload is not going to vary. The performance is not going to vary. The six gig gigabytes per second that I spoke of, that will run all day, all night, all week. So what about deduplication and compression? What role does that have to play in this environment? That has a big role because obviously it expands the capacity, but more importantly, when we take an I.O., we don't simply write the I.O. directly to the flash. We gather all writes together, and in that process, we do the dedupe, we do the compression, and then finally write it to the media. Before that write to the media occurs, we've acknowledged it back to the host. So as far as the host is, is concerned, the I.O. is done, but we have not only deduped and compressed, but we have also optimized the write so that, again, we're treating the flash nicely, we're writing to virgin flash, and we're writing in an efficient way. So it makes the, the environment just much more space efficient and sounds like it could be a little faster as well. It's space efficient, it is faster, and uh, again, we treat flash the way that flash likes to be treated. Okay, well one last question I think we get a lot from uh, you know people that are investigating flash is what about HA? This is my database and even in a mid-market if it goes down I'm in big trouble. Yeah. Uh, and I think one of the weaknesses we've seen in some flash arrays is the, the, the high availability answer is by two. And, and that's sort of a, a, the wrong way to go. What do you think? That, that's a great question, and I can remind you that I carried a pager for many years, and I know all about HA, and I know all about the pain. And at Pure Storage, we are all about resiliency. So you can replace heads, you can replace controllers non-disruptively, not only no downtime, but no performance uh, hit whatsoever. So we have videos on our website demonstrating replacing heads. You can lose drives, you can lose cards, you can lose power supplies. We are completely resilient, completely redundant, and uh, believe me, I get it, our founders get it, everybody gets it. It's our mantra. And it seems to me that that would be one of the advantages of software, because you could focus on that as opposed to have to design your own NAND chips and all that sort of stuff, right? Right. Software is a much more reliable and uh, manageable solution than trying to do it with hardware. Okay, great. Well, Chas, thanks for jumping into the video today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.